Hello everyone, my name is Zach and welcome to my channel. Amongst other things, I'm a reenactor and a jouster and today I want to talk to you about the tournament scenes in the BBC TV series Merlin. And we start the tournament with a joust. So this is Arthur here and he's wearing a helmet very similar to the one that we see in A Knight's Tale. Um, it's a bit of a kind of close helmet similar to a armet but here it's got quite a wide eye slot especially for a helmet that's that close to the head. Some historical helmets do have wider eye slots but they tend to have the eye slot further away from the head and the overlap, um, the kind of jutting prow of the lower half is uh, um, very pronounced so that splinters can't go into the eyes. I do like that they keep cutting back to Guinevere and some of the other audience members because one of the reasons given in the medieval period for jousting is to impress the ladies. So uh, um, it's quite nice that they do that. Now we have these two knights are charging towards each other. The position that they take up is quite obviously a show jousting position. In order to break a historical lance, you need to couch it, which means to um, lock it underneath your armpit. And that's the only way that you're going to get the force that you need in order to actually break the lance on someone. This um, way of holding it, but not, um, not couching it, not locking it under your armpit, um, is something that show jousters do so that they have a little bit more um, control over the amount of uh, um, impact that they give to the lance. And here we have the impact and it's an explosion of splinters and the guy falls off. Now uh, um, if you were holding the lance like that without a couch there's no way you would have been able to break your lance. Um, the way that they do it in TV shows and um, for some theatrical ones is that they fill the lance with uh, um, spaghetti and other things like that to create all of those splinters. More reactions from the crowd. Um, it would be a big thing if a knight fell off a horse. Um, that didn't happen very often. Um, okay, so this guy on the left here has flinched away from the other jousters lance. That is because he is doing a stunt. He's not actually jousting, he's just expecting the lance to come in at his head and uh, um, as a result he flinches away from it. In the period it talks about people, um, knights, flinching away from incoming blows and it's considered to be a really bad thing. The advice is that if you focus on where your lance is going then you are less likely to flinch at the oncoming blow because you have no time to think about the incoming lance. Um, the stuntman on the left is obviously not trying to hit his opponent so he is fully aware of the incoming lance and flinches away from it. And now we have a few passes where knights ride at each other and break their lances with no one falling off which is good. It is very difficult, as I think I've said before um, in this video, it's very difficult to knock someone off a horse, um, especially with a medieval saddle that is uh, um, designed to hold the knight into the saddle. This guy, however, is intentionally jumping off because he's a stuntman and uh, they want to show Arthur doing extremely well. This particular stunt being dragged along behind, you can see he's uh, um, not caught at all. He's actually holding onto a strap which is attached to the horse's saddle. That keeps him nice and safe so that he's away from the horse's hooves. Um, if he was wearing full plate armour, then uh, um, he would probably be okay and able to get up and get going again. And that is the end of the jousting segment. So now we're going to move on to the melee segment. I really like that they decided to do a melee here because um, jousting is the more famous part of the tournament but uh, um, in the medieval period melees were 
the uh, uh, much more impressive um, event. People really loved them. Loads of knights all lined up on horses in teams charging at each other. Um, really great to, uh, to watch and really impressive. So here we see the two teams charging towards each other, wheeling about, people falling off. Um, not quite as keen on that in this particular regard. It is very difficult to knock a knight off his horse with a lance and the impacts from a lance are much harder than a sword impact in a melee. So uh, um, someone falling off just from being hit by a sword is really not going to happen. Um, what you do have is uh, um, in some cases people uh, uh, people's horses falling over where they're rammed and actually um, horses would wear their own protection in the melee to uh, um, to stop impacts from uh, uh, from hurting them so they kind of had big buffers put around them underneath the caparisons and the barding that guy punching someone in the face when he's not wearing a gauntlet is not going to do him any good okay here we have Arthur's backplate and this is fine for jousting we do see this in jousting armors where they have big cutouts behind the arms um, and a basically like a roll cage going down the back this was to protect the spine in a joust um, in case you fell off um, but you they tried to remove as much weight as possible from areas where you weren't going to get hit however in a melee you are actually quite likely to get hit from behind so it's unlikely you'd see a back plate like this being used in a melee just in a joust Okay, the fighting appears to be continuing on foot. Um, this might happen in a melee, it's, it's unlikely. The big thing about the melee, um, it was considered more impressive than the joust because of the horsemanship involved. Um, obviously the impacts in a joust were much greater, but the horsemanship was less impressive. In a melee, um, there was a lot of movement, um, it, it could get very very exciting so the chance of it continuing on the ground um, is not very likely now we have two guys who are ganging up on Arthur and I spoke in my Game of Thrones video about how medieval tournaments would have a Knight of Mercy um, who could step in when things were getting out of hand but also knights were um, in melees were allowed to bring their own retinue and the retinue's job would be to help out the knight, protect the knight, and uh, um, if he was getting into trouble and needed a breather, then they could form a cordon around him um, to stop people from attacking. And uh, um, their main job was to um, not get any honor for themselves, but to protect their knight. Who is that? The idea of an unknown knight in a tournament is not really a medieval one. The whole point of a tournament was to gain honour and glory for yourself by showing off your strength and your skill. So a lot was done to make sure that everyone knew who was inside each armour. We even have people laying out their helmets beforehand and uh, um, they had to stand behind it and all of the um, audience, all of the ladies and judges would pass in front of it so that they could see which knight was inside which armour. So someone being at a tournament and people not knowing who they were is just, it's not a very medieval idea. There's only one person I know who can do that. Merlin here seems to think that only one person in the entire kingdom is able to disarm someone. Hopefully that's not true because disarming someone is one of the simpler techniques. You see it all the time in fight books and in René of Anjou's tournament book he says that uh, um, knights should have a 
lanyard to attach their weapons to their arms or to their um, saddles so that they don't lose them entirely if they drop them. A stab there, which is very naughty. We um, shouldn't be stabbing really if we're in a melee. Um, by the 15th century, a lot of uh, um, melee tournaments used specific blunted swords that had flat ends um, so as not to um, harm someone like this. Okay, I try and stay positive in these videos, but this block here is just very, very silly. Um, I couldn't help but point it out. It wouldn't work. Um, that's all I'm going to say on it. So here we have another stab going through a breastplate. Um, I believe in the story this sword is enchanted, so we'll let it go that it goes through a breastplate. And we have Anthony Head very, very sad. And of course he would be, because... It, He's just seen some of his knights die at a sporting event. And that was one of the big problems with tournaments um, and why some people really didn't like them. Because uh, um, some of the best knights, um, some of the best fighters and statesmen ended up getting very badly injured um, and in some cases killed. So that's the end of the tournament. My overall thoughts, it's great to see a mounted melee. Uh, you don't often see that. Very often people go for just a joust or just foot combat. Um, but the mounted melee is so cool and uh, um, when it's done well is uh, um, really great. So it would be good to see that more in TV shows and in film. How would I improve this? Well, there's not a lot of colour. Um, the knights aren't wearing any shields, their horses aren't wearing caparisons, and for the melee they're not wearing tabards. That would have been really lovely to see. Um, a huge part of medieval tournament is the pageantry and the colour and the performance art of it as well. So uh, um, I would have loved to have seen that. Well, thank you very much for tuning in. If you liked this video, if you learned something new, please leave a like. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section. If you have any suggestions of tournament scenes or jousts that you'd like me to talk about, then uh, um, leave some suggestions in the comment section as well. And of course, if you haven't already, then please do subscribe. Thanks very much for joining me, and I'll see you in my next video.